What's a good explanation as to why the Ravens treat Tyson Williams the way that they do? Should the Ravens bench inside linebacker Patrick Queen? Is there a health issue that nobody's talking about going on with Marlon Humphrey? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. You know, y'all can already send it directly on Patreon. Y'all ain't got to go through all the hoops and all that. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We got some good questions as we always do every single time. Let's do it. First question came from my guy, Daryl W. He said, what's good, Engraven? Thank you for always bringing quality content to the flock. Uh, we truly appreciate you. No, I, I appreciate y'all, man. Like, straight up. Because it's y'all that are the crazy ones that watch this stuff, like, every day. So I, I appreciate y'all for, for supporting the way y'all do. Now, my question is, how are, how we are treating Tyson Williams? I get it. He fumbled. He's not the first and most certainly won't be the last. But it's amazing how other players can have continual bad performances and we stick by them. Lamar had fumbling issues his first year and we stood by him. Well, that's a little different because that's your first round draft pick, your quarterback, your next franchise quarterback. And so that, that's a little bit different with that one. Hollywood had some big drops and we stood by him. Again, Different because that's your first round draft pick, your wide receiver who your quarterback picked, hand picked to for you to select. So that's a little, little different scenario there too. Uh Queen can't tackle worth anything, and we stand by him. Oof. Oh <laughs> that Ooh, that one hurt my heart. But again, first round draft pick, big investment, so much different. Uh he said, I think Hobbs needs to drop that doghouse policy. Williams is surrounded by good players who will pick him up and help him get better. Oh, I love that. Uh, I don't see Clyde Edwards Alea on the bench, and he had a fumble that arguably cost the Chiefs the game. If this is the way we're going to treat him, maybe we should trade him, and I hope he balls out the way Waller has for the Raiders. What do you think? Mm. In that doghouse. Um, with Tyson Williams, yes, he best runner on the team, um, and not even close. Uh, I just, with him... It's a, it's a weird situation, man. Because the Ravens, they've been struggling running the ball all year. Um, he has given them their best running plays, uh, obviously, besides Lamar Jackson. But, uh, yeah, just, just those two have been given the best running plays. Uh, while the under, other running backs, they'll get, like, maybe three, four yards a pop. Um, but with Tyson, he – I just – Ravens just simply aren't invested in him. That's all it is. They're not invested in him. Uh, so the fact that that's the reason why they'll they'll bench him. They had him inactive for the game. That, that's why they they don't care that they don't give him many carries like that. That's why they, it seems like they may be sort of phasing him out because they're not invested in him. And that's it. Um, he wasn't a first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh round pick. He was an undrafted rookie free agent. He was on a team last year, um, and then this year. He only got his opportunity because literally everybody got hurt. Uh, and I think the Ravens view it just like that. Like, hey, yeah, we hope that he does well when we do give him chances, but we don't have to give him chances because it is what it is. He fumbled because he's already on a short leash because the Ravens, and again, they, they signed all those running backs. And so he was already on a short leash. So with him, when he walked into that doghouse, he, was probably, he already probably had one foot in there. Because they were like, man, if you make one mistake, oh, and from the first game, he had the fumble. So, and then, of course, the, the fumble on the goal line against the Chiefs. Um, and those were potentially some big plays. Now, he did, they didn't lose those fumbles, but still, they were fumbles, and they could potentially lose them. But I, um, it, it does seem like he, if those rumors about the, the Ravens possibly trading a running back or receiving offers for their running back are true, 
Yeah, I feel like it could be Tyson too because, again, they just simply are not invested in him. Next question came from my boy Howard. He said, what's happening in Graven? This is more of a comment than a question. I swear I hate when our Ravens play on Monday nights. Not because of the big stage or national audience. I hate ESPN's broadcast team. Well, that's a strong word now. He said, it's more than obvious. They don't like the Ravens. Just listen closely to the call and all their commentators talk about is the other team all night long. Doesn't matter if we're on offense or defense or if we're home or away. It might just be me, but curious on your thoughts about that. Hashtag Raven Nation. Now, me, I, because, I, you know, we be doing the streams during the game, so I can't really hear much that they're saying uh, about the Ravens. I, I listened to it a little bit before, um, like, but like maybe like 20 minutes before we start the stream, and I, I turn on ESPN and see what it's looking like, and it's nice to, to see the stadium because it, it makes you miss it a lot. If you haven't been there in a while, uh, it makes you miss it a lot, and I have not been there since, obviously, not last year at all. Um, I think the Titans playoff game. Yeah, Titans playoff game was the last game, that, last Ravens game that I went to. Um, and then we went to the thing this this offseason, the, uh, the whatever it's called. Man, I forgot what it's called. But anyway, um, so, yeah, I can't really hear what they're saying. Uh, but, I mean, it, it is what it is. It's... It's part of the commentary. And something that I, I, I forgot what, where I was watching it. I think it might have been Strong Opinion Sports. But he was saying that um, with ESPN, what they do is they, they just try to uh, find out which topic, which headline is going to upset the people watching. Uh, that's what we're going to go with. And, I mean, it's, it seems like if that's what they're doing with the commentary, too, then it's working. Uh, how was next question? He said, well, what's happening in Graven? I was just thinking about the Ravens game last night as well as all of our games so far. The focus in my thinking was on one of our deficiencies on our defense. I think it might be time to switch Patrick Queen out of the Mike linebacker spot and into the wheel linebacker spot. Uh, and either see what Malik Harrison can do at the Mike spot or just put Josh Bynes back in the starting lineup um, like they did back in 2019. Remember when our former linebacker, 48, uh, Patrick on on Wasu, he said, I'm not spelling his last name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just put Patrick. Oh, I, I added the Nwasu. But anyway, he said, remember when Patrick played well in the wheel spot in 2018, but it didn't work with him playing at the mic in the beginning of 2019. So they brought Bynes and Fort in to stabilize the inside linebacker group. That's true. That's good point. Uh, really good point. I'm thinking that might work with Queen. I'm curious to know your thoughts on my idea. Oh, poor Patrick Queen, man. Um, it's been a lot of talk. On Patrick Queen, moving him, possibly benching him, replacing him uh, with a Josh Bynes who is there, who they brought back, and that's that's not it's not really a good look if your team has four linebackers, four inside linebackers: Patrick Queen, Malik Harrison, um, Chris Board, and uh, Christian Welch, and they still sign a veteran inside linebacker to the practice squad. So that lets you know how they feel about the current group of linebackers. And that's whether you as that as one of those linebackers like it or not. Um, so should they bench Patrick Queen or change his position? It is very tough to say because um, it, it has been a struggle. And they have benched him throughout some games. They've sat him down. They brought him out on some third downs. They sat him for a, a little while. Um, but then – in coverage like what do you do do you move Tyus Bowser back there to cover because uh, Malik Harrison he struggled in coverage Patrick Queen he struggled in coverage um board I do not remember how he did in coverage I know toward the end of the Chiefs game they had him out there and he because uh, Malik Harrison was on Travis Kelsey and that's Travis Kelsey but still um he was dogging Malik Harrison all night man all night he was dogging him uh they brought out Chris Board and, and, and quieted down for for Travis Kelsey but with Patrick Queen, first-round pick, so there is that investment. The investment is there. Um, but at the same time, we have seen first-round picks. We've seen them get traded faster than ever nowadays. Um, but with Patrick Queen, um, they just got to really work on the fundamentals, man. That's – and it's, it's crazy to, like, think about it and see it. and But they just got to – they really got to work on those fundamentals, man. They, they have to because – he the the speed is there and it's crazy because i remember when i watched him um when i watched film on him back when the ravens drafted him my biggest thing was like okay he's, he's fast he's fast but i just felt like he was too small 
I feel like he was too small. I feel like he needed to put some weight on. I feel like he needed to just get a little bit stronger for the NFL. And remember, there was, there was another guy back in, what, 96, where he got drafted, and he said he was too small. He said he was fast, but he said he was too small to play linebacker. And it worked out pretty good for him in the long run. Um, that being Ray Lewis. But with Patrick Queen, I just felt the same thing. And then I remember when he came out, and he was saying that people felt like he was too small, but he's saying that he didn't pay no attention to that. Then he ended up getting bigger. <laughs> he ended up putting on weight. So it's like the Ravens, they, they saw the same thing, that he, um, he might have been a little bit too small. But I, uh, it seems like everything that I, I saw myself um, and the opinions that I formed on Patrick Queen from when we drafted him, um, it seemed like some of that stuff is, is came to fruition. Uh, he's not a bad player. But just the, the tackling, I mean, as a linebacker, you got to tackle. You got to tackle. And, again, the, the, the strength and, again, the, the getting pushed back. And, again, people are going to get pushed back. It's going to happen every now and then. But as a linebacker, you don't want it to happen, like, every now and then and, and then now and then again. Um, so, I mean, my solution to it, mm, I don't even know, man. Because it's like... They, they've they been, and it's, it's only been five games, but we've seen that same struggle, though. But uh, and thank goodness the Ravens had won four out of the five games. But with, with Patrick Queen, it's just, it's, it's the situation, as you can tell. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm flustered by it because I don't know. Because you, you hear about them say, oh, yeah, the Ravens putting on pass today in practice because they're going to work on tackling, da 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 um, And then you saw what happened, and then they did it again. They did it again, and then I think they, the whole pass thing, they talked about that um, the the week before the Broncos, yeah, the week leading up to the Broncos game. And then there was some bad tackling in that game, too. And then the following week leading up to the Colts game, they're like, oh, yeah, they put on pass today to practice tackling. They're working on tackling drills. And then you saw the Colts game. Tackling was terrible through all four quarters. Um, now, it wasn't terrible through five quarters because the Ravens, they were only on offense. Uh, so with that being said, I just, I really don't know what to do. Maybe, maybe if he were to get benched, like really benched, not just a temporary bench, but really bench in the game, then it could serve as a wake up call possibly. Um, and that could just really give him that extra motivation. Cause with different people, everybody's not motivated the same. Everybody's not pushed the same. Uh, everybody doesn't react to, um, I don't want to say punishment, but they don't react to punishment is not the word. I'm, I'm, I'm too much in dad mode right now. Everybody doesn't react to whether it be criticism or um, I can't think of the word right now. They don't react to uh, they don't react to it the same. Uh, but so they would just have to find try different ways with Patrick Queen to just really try to get him back, get him better. Get him wrapping up. Because, again, the whole Marlon Humphrey thing, too. Marlon Humphrey telling this dude on the field. He knows the cameras are watching. He knows they under the lights on the field. Telling Patrick Queen, wrap up, wrap up. And this dude, he, you could see how frustrated he was. And it reminded me of the whole Chuck Clark and Earl Thomas thing. Not, obviously, they're not fighting. And I ain't saying like that. But to where you could tell it was this pent-up frustration. Something that had been building didn't just come out of nowhere, but something that had been building with Marlon Humphrey toward Patrick Queen. Not no beef or nothing like that, but just the frustration when it comes to the tackling to where he, to me, this is my opinion. It just looked like he'd been holding him back for so long, holding back, holding back, and then he's like, oh, just wrap up, man. So I, I just, I really don't know what the solution to it would be because... He's a first round pick, so again, the investment is there, and you don't just want to bench him, but at the same time, you 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 want what's the what the best move would be for the football team as a whole. Now Malik Harrison, he's a really good tackler. Really good tackler, very physical guy. Uh doesn't have the same speed as a Patrick Queen. Um Patrick Queen been great on the blitz. Maybe you maybe you could switch them for a game. I don't know, man. Maybe you could do that. Will Malik be able to handle that role? Hey, throw it at him and see. Throw it at him and see. 
What's what's the, the worst that could happen? Next question came from my guy Lance. He said, hope your day is going well, but I'm going to get straight to it. I want to know if you believe Mark Andrews with the way that he has been playing, if he could be one of the Ravens' best tight ends. Yeah. I mean, see, with Mark Andrews, it not not that it makes him any worse because he's been really good, but who have been some of the, rest, the best Ravens' tight ends? It's like three. Todd Heap and Dennis Pitta. Then Mark Andrews. That's it. And that's obviously because the Ravens, they haven't been around very long as a franchise. Um, so he doesn't have much competition to go against. But he, again, that it doesn't make him bad because he's not bad. He's really, really good. Um, but yes, definitely. And he said, oh, also, I think we could or we should be questioning Marlon Humphrey. Is he healthy or does he just not want to play? Because he missed a lot of tackles and was getting beat by their wide receivers and tight ends. Hope you have a good day. Um, with Marlon Humphrey... I think they're just tired. I think they were just tired because the defense early on, they did give up that 74-yard play touchdown, but they were out there a lot, like a lot, especially in the first half. We really threw out. I don't think the Colts got like not one three and out, and if they did, they there wasn't many of them. Uh, but the, the Ravens' defense was out there a lot. And early on, the Ravens' offense, they went three and out. Then they came back the next drive, and, and they got a first down, but then they punted it right away after that. Um, so the Ravens' offense was not doing them any favors. So I and, it, and it did look like at one point in the game, Marlon Humphrey, he was really uncomfortable with something. So, yeah, something going on. Um, but ho hopefully it's not his groin that's bothering him. And the last question on this episode came from my boy Ricky B. He said, what's up, Engraven? I got a ton of questions for Flock Nation. Uh-oh. First question, what is going on with Patrick Queen's tackling? Honestly, the whole team for that matter. It seems like we go for the big hit rather than the short tackle. I think that's what happens when um, that, that pressure been getting to him, that pressure. And when your defense is giving up all these third down conversions, you're giving up all these big plays, um, these chunk plays, then you start to get desperate and you start to forget fundamentals. You'd want to make a big play. You want to force a turnover. Um, you want to be the hero. So you go for them little extra plays. Anyway, he said, uh, it, my second question is, do we have any timetable on the return of Tyree Phillips and Ronnie Stanley? Ronnie Stanley, no. Tyree Phillips within the next, um, within the next like seventeen, within the next seventeen days. So within the next two weeks and change, uh, he'll be back on the roster within the next two weeks and change. Ronnie Stanley, though, no. Uh, third, why does it take so long for the offense to get going? Um, I understand trying to establish the run, but if it's not working, do what works and use pass to set up the run. Well, that has been a question from a lot of Ravens fans. That same thing. The offense has had some slow, 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 slow starts. And that has just, it, it's, it's hurt the defense a lot. Um, it's hurt the, uh, it's, it's just hurt them big time. Because when your offense starts slow, then your defense, who, in a lot of these games, they start off playing pretty good. Um, so it's, it, it, when we look at Ravens defense, a lot of times for their, uh, some of the reason, not necessarily an excuse, but some of the reason for their bad play a lot of times could end up because they, they might just be tired. They might just be really tired from being out there. But the offense would, they would help the defense so much if they just started off a lot quicker than they have been. So the defense, they could get stuff going and all, it, it, it just, it, it, everybody can help everybody. Um, and he said, lastly, I do believe there is a speed back out there that has great vision that we could pick up for a bargain. They don't have to be a household name, but just fast with vision. Or do you think that it's a different uh, or, or do you think it's a detriment to our offensive line? Seems like we don't get as much push from the O-line in the run game. That That is true. <laughs> we sure don't uh, because we like we got a speed back now in Tyson Williams, but we ain't got no lanes. Um, and, and then again, with picking up a running back off the street. Yeah, that'd be cool, what not? And but they they did that with three guys. They did that with three guys. Now that none of them are speed guys. Well, Devonte Freeman is, but it's the um, something that I took for granted uh, was the, uh, the the handoff, uh, the the handoff from Lamar Jackson to the running back. It just I I just felt like oh you could put anybody back there, but this year has shown like to me no you can't, no you can't. While Lamar does enhance uh, the running back that's back there with him, that the mesh point is everything. And if they can't get it together there, then it's just it's, it's not going to work. And there's less of a threat uh, for that running back to do damage. And he said, thank you for all you're doing, Graven. You're great at what you do. Keep being you. 
I ain't nothing special, man. But I appreciate you watching and always sending in some fire questions. Shout out to